I'd rather regret the things I've done than regret the things I haven't done. Start where you are. Use what you have and do what you can. If there is no struggle, there can be no progress. You didn't come this far just to come this far. Rockstars, welcome to episode 30 of Stuck on Sawdust. My name's Daniel with Bearded Viking Woodworks. If you're new to the channel, make sure to catch up on the previous episodes of the Stuck on Sawdust series. You don't want to miss out. About a month or so ago, I made a video on how to build this badass coat rack. I wanted to switch things up and make an easier coat rack for beginners to make and be able to make some profit. So I went scouring online and found this badass coat rack for a big ass profit. And this project is perfect. And we're gonna put our own spin on this thing. Hey! Let's get right to it and meet me at the table saw. The thing I like most about this coat rack is the fact that it takes limited tools to make. It's super easy to make but overall, it packs one of the biggest profits that I've found for an easy DIY coat rack. Wait till you see what they ask for this thing. But first, we gotta get it built. I've got a piece of five quarter by six decking out of Ipe, and I think this is gonna be a perfect wood to use for the actual wall mount. And then we'll make our coat racks out of this wonderful two by four pine I got. And I think combined, these two are really gonna pop. So let's figure out our dimensions and get it cracking. So their piece is about 30 inches long, but I don't wanna make one for five racks. I'm just gonna make one to hold three racks. So we're gonna go ahead at 24 inches for our Epe mount. And then for our two by four racks, I'm just gonna cut two pieces at roughly one foot just to start with. So let's head over to the miter box. Oh, Before we do anything else, we need to take these roundovers here and get rid of them on the joiner and then get them planed down and make them all square. And if you don't have a jointer or a planer, there's plenty of videos out there on how to get your material flat and square. Or you can just order your material or pick it up as S4S, which is surfaced four sides. As far as our Epe goes, the Epe has a slight round over on each edge, but this thing is already squared and good to go. So let's just head over to the joiner, get these round overs off, and then we'll head to the planer, get it squared up, and I'll meet you back here at the table saw. Hey, think fast. Wow, who the hell? So I was going to do just three coat racks, however, it's me and my wife in the house, so, so I'm going to give her two and give myself two for my hat and my jacket, and she'll be able to do her purse and her coat. These two by fours ultimately came out to be three and three eighths, so I'm going to take my marking wheel here and just eyeball for half lock it in place and then I'll just make a scribe line on this side and then on the opposite side 
and then any adjusting I'll go ahead and do that way I can get an accurate mark for center so we're gonna go ahead and rip these in half and then take our ePay and get the layout for our coat racks how we like it Now that we got our 2x4s ripped, we're going to go ahead to the miter box and we're going to put a 45 degree angle on each piece. And I'll meet you back over here to get this ePay laid out. Go ahead and turn your angle to a 45. And we're just going to put a 45 degree angle right on the edge of each piece. Now what we want to do is figure out the height of our notch for the ePay. And I'm just going to take my 45 degree angle and lay it flat on my tabletop here. And just kind of play around with where I think it's going to look best for my piece to sit inside this ePay. And I'm liking it right here. So I'm going to make a little tick mark right at the back side of my coat rack. Right there on the ePay and I'll measure up to see what that number is and that's an inch and seven eighths so we're going to start off with the height of our notches at an inch and seven eighths now I just need to figure out where I want to lay them out so I'll just take each coat rack and set them on here like this and just kind of play around with it I'm actually kind of liking this spacing right here. So I've got two inches from the edge on each side. In between two inches, we've got 20. And then for the spacing in between, it's going to work out to be 4 and 11 sixteenths in between each coat rack. So we pulled in two inches, and then we'll take and pull in at 8 and 1 8 from either side. And that will be our layout. And your layout doesn't have to be this way. This is just what I prefer. So it'll be these four notches. And the height of each notch is an inch and seven eighths. Let's go ahead and grab our handy dandy miter sled. I'm gonna start at an inch and a half. I know I measured an inch and seven eighths to where my mark was, but I just wanna try out an inch and a half and see how that winds up looking. So our piece is a little big to set up stop blocks. So. <laughs> Damn squirrels. So anyway, our piece is too big to set up any stop blocks. So we're gonna go ahead and go right in between each line, leaving the line, making sure not to cut it. And then we'll sneak up on that fit. Oh yeah, I'm liking that right there. So we're gonna go ahead and cut the rest of these and I'll meet you back here and we'll get this thing glued up. Now, our next order of business is cutting this side of our coat rack. So what you wanna do, get a flat surface like your table saw bench and lay your 45 flat onto it and push it into your notch. Take your carpenter square like this. Make sure it's flat on the deck and touching your ePay backer. And describe this side of that square. And here's your long point measurement for each of your blocks. 
So these are going to be cut long to long of a 45 degree angle, 10 and 1 quarter. We're just going to go ahead and zap all of our pieces down to 10 and a quarter, long to long. Now that we've got all of our pieces cut, we're going to go ahead and sand everything down to 150 to be ready for finish. And I'm going to go ahead and cut out for our key slots for the backer mounting hardware. And we'll finish this beautiful coat rack up. The typical stud layout in a home is 16 set ahead. We want to have our key slots work out to where each screw can mount into a stud so we'll start our first key slot at four inches here and then we'll pull over from here at 16 and a half that way we'll be sure that that screw for our key slot will hit that stud so we're just going to take our square and make a mark on the side of our backer just transfer it all the way over to the top edge. And I've got some marks on my fence here indicating where the center of this key slot bit is. So I know to line up this top mark I made on the edge with that mark for the center of the key slot. And then we're just going to go three quarters once we plunge it down. And back here, we'll do the same thing. We'll transfer our mark to the top edge. And that will indicate where our key slot needs to start. And this way, you can be sure that this will mount to that wall securely into two studs. Let's go ahead and get these cut in. I've got it set up to where my key slots are going to be coming from the top down an inch and a half. Let the blade stop, pull back, lift up. Let's go get this sanded down and glued up. So we're gonna get everything sanded down with some 150 grit. So before we glue our 2x4 racks into our Ipe, I wanted to just spice this thing up just a little bit and engrave a welcome sign because it'll be at the front door of my house. Recently I was gifted this 20 watt laser and it took me a while to set it up and once I got it set up, the thing I really see myself using this for is most likely going to be engraving. I'm just gonna engrave this welcome sign into our piece. Once it's finished up, we'll glue it up. But let's see how this thing works. I'm curious. Okay, so I got our welcome sign all ready to go. I'm gonna go to my preview window and see how long this should take. Estimated time, 50 seconds. Hell, let's rock and roll. Now that we got everything finished up, we're going to go ahead and glue this thing together. So what I'm going to do is add a dab of glue to the whole inside of each side of the notches and leave a little area where I can put some CA glue with some activator and that way I get some temporary clamp action. And you want to wipe this epay down with mineral spirits or denatured alcohol more preferably. Once you get that glued up, 
Go ahead and just spray your 2x4 with the activator. Slide it in. Push it tight to your notch. Make sure you're flat against your table saw deck. And just hold that in place for about 15 seconds. Once that activator cures and dries, it'll act as a temporary clamp while the wood glue dries. And we'll just continue this process all the way down our piece. And then we'll take and flip our piece over and get the squeeze out cleaned up. And once we get that squeeze out cleaned up, you're going to want to take some CA glue and add a dab of glue to each side of where the 2x4 meets that epe, And just hit it with some activator. And that'll help hold everything in place while that wood glue dries. And we're just using a straight lacquer finish for this piece. Nothing special. Now for the mounting hardware where we cut in our key slots, we're going to take a piece of tape and run it across the whole piece and line it up evenly to the back of your backer, just like so. And then make those indentions with your finger until that key slot appears through the tape then we'll take our sharpie and just circle where the key slot begins and that's where our hardware will be mounted to the wall once we take our tape off so we'll find our studs in the wall and as you will be able to see that layout for our key slots we made lines up perfect with our layout in the wall for our studs and we'll pre-drill the holes and we're just gonna add some two inch T20 framing screws for our hardware. And you want the head of your screw to stick out about a quarter inch from the wall. And we'll bring our piece over. Line it up with our screws and pull over. And that is mounted to our wall. So let's take a look back at theirs. They're asking $92 for this thing. And check this out. It's in 20 people's carts right now. This thing is a hot seller. It's easy to make. It's beginner friendly. And I hope this inspires you to get in the shop and put some spin on this thing. As far as material costs, you're looking at about $8 worth of material. It's not very big. It doesn't take much material at all and the finish a couple bucks shipping i got the shipping calculated at around 12 dollars depending on where you ship it so we're going to go on the high end to build this finish it and ship it at 20 dollars that my friends packs a ass <coughs> profit and it's straight up my alley now i'm sure i'll be building this again and if i do i'll be shrinking the racks just a little bit but that is the beauty of woodworking. You work and you learn. Before we go, I want to share some of my members' projects that they recently shared with me. They're going to blow your mind. Check out this badass table my member Richard built. Holy cow, this thing is gorgeous. It has a floating effect, and I absolutely love the waterfall effect on the other side. This thing is top-notch and badass. Hell of a job, Richard. Hell of a job. Next up, we got one of my members, Vani, who made this cool little key ring holder. And it's not the biggest project, but you know what? I absolutely love this thing. It's different. It's rustic. Great job, Vani. Great, great job. I absolutely love it. Well, guys, that does it for this video. I hope y'all had fun. My head hurts a little bit from taking that 2x4 to the cranium, but I'm good. So, until next time, get in your shop and make some sawdust. This has been Bearded Viking Woodworks, and I have been Daniel. Thanks, guys. <laughs>